Hi. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I loved last year's Swiss JS and Swiss G's, which was the better concept, by the way. And um, I'm all the more excited to talk about um, Pokemon today. Um, a bit about myself. I'm Stefanie Tepke. I'm a software engineer. I am from Bremen in Germany, but I live in Zurich now. And the most important thing is I'm a Pokemon fan. So I did my master course in Berlin. And at some point, I had the opportunity to pick a topic of my own choosing as a homework. And I had so many great intelligent ideas, reasonable ideas as well. And the obvious choice was the weird idea, Pokemon. And my mentors were totally out of their minds. So I will talk to you about the idea a bit. Um, I was talking with uh, a friend of mine like five years ago. We were like, how would it be if we could just walk around in the world and actually meet Pokemon while we go around with our smartphones? And I thought, this sounds amazing. And um, you could also like play it with humans, like trainers you meet, and everything got all excited. So, sounds so great to me. So, um, for all of you, like, because even though a couple of you already get the jokes, but maybe some of you weren't that lucky to grow up with Pokemon, um, I will explain it to you. So, the Pokemon world, um, it's a pretty similar world to ours. Um, it's very complex. I wasn't expecting that, because when I played it as a child, it was just this fancy world, gray and white, you know, back then, no colors. And um, the gameplay is pretty compl complex, but um, I will explain it to you now, and I'm only come focusing on the red and blue version, because those are the original ones. Um, so, Pokemon, those little cute creatures, um, they're pretty similar to the animals in our real world. And they live in this fictional Pokemon world, which is very similar to ours. It behaves like ours, they have water, whatever. And um, with the exception of those little funny creatures living there. So, how the game works is um, you walk around on the map, and um, all the Pokemons, they have their own habitat, pretty much. So, at the beginning, you already, you only meet the cute Pokemon, which look, which live in the forest, which you cross first. And, um, yeah. And in the game, the main concept is that you uh, defeat eight gym leaders, so you gain medals. Uh, but you could also focus just on collecting them all, you know? So, in this game, maybe this sounds familiar, it's um, you have the Pokedex. Um, this is your main device, which has all the information about the Pokémon you meet. Uh, when you meet uh, a Pikachu, it will show you what it can do, what, uh, what it's about. So, this is actually pretty much um, the smartphone of the Pokémon trainer. So, it is pretty much a location-based game anyways, but in the Game Boy. So, the gameplay adaption. Um, I played the game excessively, but uh, playing it in real life gives it um, a whole new way. And I thought it was really easy to do, but um, you have to think about a lot of stuff, like how you map the world to actually the game. And um, my goal was to keep it pretty um, similar to the main concept, to the original one, and to not change too much. So first I had to do the sparring analysis, what can the things do, like what can Pokemon do, what do they have, what features, the boring stuff, and um, how to map all this to the real world. Uh, for example, in the game you have um, a Pokemon Center, which is a pretty um, main spot you have to visit once in a while. There you can like have access to Pokemon you store and um, trade your items. Um, another thing which is uh, different in the game is, uh, well, the main target group is actually not us, it's children. Maybe some of you are also still children like me, but uh, you have to consider the privacy issue because um, you don't want any weird people to contact your children while they're playing this fun game. And um, so I 
implemented this um, feature where you could only like where you could decide how you share your location and this is like one way for example is ready mode ready mode pretty much means that uh, you when you are in ready mode you are sharing your location to everyone who is close to you um, but if you really want to fight right now and your neighborhood just hasn't seen the awesomeness of Pokemon yet and you really want to fight anyway, then you can switch into seek mode. That way you will see everybody else who's in seek mode. Um, so next step I did was I built a paper prototype. It's really ugly, that's also why I never painted something cool. Um, there you see like the um, screen where you like um, type in your information. It's in German, maybe some of you are familiar with that language. Um, some. <laughs> so, but let's switch to um, development. Uh, I decided to go for mobile site because it's um, easier to adapt to different devices and uh, also because it's easier to develop too, I have to admit. Um, the main, the most important part of the whole game is the map integration. I used Leaflet.js. It's um, a really convenient service to include a beautiful map. It lets, it lets you customize it really easy. And also the data is provided by OpenStreetMap. And it's a little woof, it's OpenStreetMap. And um, it already implements everything you need um, and also has the connection to um, mobile uh, devices. So this is how easy it is to include. This is all I needed to uh, include the map. Um, you make all your preferences. Uh, I really didn't want to use zoom, uh, no, um, dragging for example, because it's not a map. It's like you only see where you are because you have to move to play this game. So no couch potato game, sorry. Um, and yeah, now you also re already see um, how I include the Pokemon icon, like really easy. Um, so how to retrieve the location is also pretty straightforward. I create a little rectangle, maybe you learned this already, and um, like the part I have to put into consideration where I want to meet Pokemon, what, how, what I work with in the game. Um, so what I get is information of OpenStreetMap, and they have several RPs to access their data. And first I had to find out which data is um, important for me or what, what works for me because you find so many stuff. You find like what kind of street is this? Is this like a railway or is this um, a river? Which is actually quite matching because water. Maybe you get where I'm getting it. So for me the overpass IP did the job. And um, so what it gets me first is um, all this information. It's like a really pretty XML stuff. And so this doesn't get me anywhere yet for my Pokemon because I don't know, I don't see Pikachu living on a highway. And at least I don't want it to. Uh, so those natural features that I decided to go with, um, they aren't everywhere. So I also had to put into, into consideration what is important and what is also uh, available everywhere. So I went to for natural features, and to read them out, I used the um, OSM read by Markus Perebner. And um, that may, gave me the op opportunity to pick what I wanted for, uh, for my location, what I, which information I needed. So this is how it looks. Um, I created my rectangle, and this is a really ugly call. Um, how I get this um, information about the natural features. Natural features include information of water or grass or stone, something which is um, environmental. And then it finally gets, like, how do I put the Pokemon in? And there is an API for that as well, of course. Thank you, Paul Hallett, for creating a Pokemon API. When I found that, I was pretty on short time. And when I found that out, it was pretty great. <laughs> so thank you. And so how this, this looks is um, I match the Pokemon types to the natural environment I have. So if I have water around me, 
I will map it to some feature like the Pokemon type that Paul Hallett has in his API and will show whatever Pokemon matches. So, what is something your mother tells you never to do? A live demo. I'm trying to make this work anyways. If I... Okay. This is really ugly, I know. This is why I didn't come up with designer. Um, I'm really sorry that you have to cope with that, but yeah, it's a prototype. So I'm gonna register. Call a Swiss JS. Uh, not now. So which Pokemon do we wanna choose? Charmander? I heard Charmander. Pikachu is not in the first few versions. That's why I said I, p I only focus on red and blue. <laughs> Feature request, that's good. So this is my Pokedex. I know it looks really beautiful. Um, can take a look at this beautiful page. Uh, not beautiful, I know. And now I go to the most important part, the map. So this builds up. This is us as SwissJS. Oh, and we found a Wigglypuff, so we can fight it now. So this is pretty basic too. It's, um, I re didn't really implement the fight itself because it's, it had to, to be like a prototype. But I can fight it if I hit this. Yeah. What do we want to use? Solar power? Solar, solar power. So yeah. The thing is, it can't like do any attacks. I can only do them, so I always win, and I can also catch it, so and I always win. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a prototype, uh, but it shows where I want to go. I have to which way? It's okay. So no. So I'm already there. Um, the conclusion for me uh, was this game is way more complex than I thought it would be. And to implement the game map on the, map on the real world is just is a really different story because you would want to be able to meet other trainers as well. But at the same time, you also want to play it on your own. At least you want to be able to and like to see the little, the, the few, um, the arena lighter. It's an English term, I know. Um, take to gain the medals. So this is a quite a challenge, uh, but I talked to I talked about this idea to a lot of people, and uh, even non-nerds were very excited about this, even if they weren't so big of Pokemon fans. So that got me really excited about this idea as well. At the same time, there's a big problem about this, and this is um, pri um, these are the legal issues. Um, you know, everything of this belongs to Nintendo. And actually, I, I gave this talk uh, last year in Berlin, and after that I talked to my media law professor and asked him, like, what can I do like, to keep developing it? Uh, do I have to scare, be scared of being sued? He said, like, yeah, you should take it down. Um, that was quite sad for me, actually, because, I mean, I. Right now, it's just like to show a proof of concept that it works, but you, I still wanted to do this. So I actually wrote to Nintendo, and I got like similar reply. Like they didn't even read the stuff, whatever. And um, if you want to get come get at us, then like use a lawyer, and then we can talk things. So that is quite a bummer too. But at the same time. A lot of people, um, like a lot of people, like five or six people came towards me and wrote me emails like, hey, we're doing pretty much the same thing. And a student project in Heidelberg, they, um, they have been doing their master thesis um, on um, this game pretty much, but for the smartwatch. And this was getting me pretty excited. And I'm actually still like, hey, together we can do this. I'm not giving up yet. So. Um, we right now I'm trying like to find other people who are tr um, like get together and maybe we can make it work at some point if we 
get Nintendo, they will probably now definitely sue me. Um, so that was already it. Thank you for listening to me. Sorry, it was a bit unorganized. And uh, yeah, you'll find me on GitHub, on Twitter, and gotta catch them all. <laughs> Questions? Um, how do you decide what Pokemon to show where? What to what? what? How do you decide what Pokemon show up in what part of the world? Um, that's where, where um, I consider the natural features. So if there's grass, I only show grass Pokemons. But also, um, you have, like, if you don't have anything, then you get like the standard Pokemon, those normal type Pokemon. So um, over here, you can't meet. Um, a squirtle because over here is no water. But so you'd actually have to go to a river or into a lake or into the ocean to meet one. But, but then where do you get that information? Uh, that's what I get from um, OpenStreetMap. Ah, really? Yeah, okay. that's, that's sorry that, I, that didn't come around. Uh, no, I just missed it. That's like one of the most important stuff, sorry. Hi. Uh, you Hi. are talking about the mobile approach. Uh, do you take the location from the browser, or do you need? Do you yeah, need to you have to accept it first, like the usual stuff. Like, do you want to provide your location? Yes, no, and then I see where the user is. Okay, so it's it's doable only with the browser of the mobile. Right now, yes, and that's yeah. That was quite funny because in the beginning I was like playing around with the OpenStreetMap data, and. Um, I was in a building and I asked myself like yeah what why do I don't why don't I find like natural features and I actually had to go test my game in the grass for example. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi. Um, you said there's a Pokemon ah, uh, there. a Pokemon Center is that at Zurich? Well, that's not implemented yet. Okay. So this is pretty much everything you can do right now. Okay. Um, yeah. I would really love to keep working on this, but this Nintendo stuff is kind of putting this work down, yeah. Are there many people playing it at the moment? Uh, it's not online. Ah, okay. Because my lawyer said no. <laughs> I have a question. Because yeah. there was a, this project, is it raining in Bern? And since we have a ground, you can go on ground Pokemons, but if you merge with this project and it's raining, people can start catching the water Pokemons. Could be, that could be a good idea. And yeah. So yeah, it's running on a bunch of people trying to catch Pokemon. Yeah, so only in Bern, yeah. only in Bern you could find water Pokemon <laughs> when it's raining. <laughs> if it's shifting, yeah. <laughs> Shifts. That's a good idea, I like that. Other questions? Good. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.